Okay, well, it's seven o'clock. Are there any objections to getting started? Nope. Very good here. Uh, well, I'd like to ask everybody participating in the call if they could just unmute momentarily because I'd like for everyone to say who's on the call, uh, introduce themselves so we know what neighborhood you're in and um, can speak with you individually. And we'll start with top left. I'm assuming everybody's screen is the same. So that's uh, you, Councilman Minichino. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Vince Minichino. I'm a councilman in Brick and I'm um, located in Brick, obviously. I'm Joanne Bergen, the business administrator. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'm Art Halloran, councilman and Brick. Um, looking forward to uh, this meeting. Okay, so that's the and and Alyssa. Hi, my name is Alyssa Cummins. I'm the township engineer for Brick Township. Okay, so those are Brick people. Can the um, Act folks introduce themselves, please? Yep, I'm Carol Besky from Act Engineers, and you'll be hearing from me very shortly. I'm Jared Eric Rosina from Act Engineers. Eric Rosina from Act Engineers. Thank you, Eric. I'm Rob Corkage, also from Act Engineers. Junetta Dix from Act Engineers. Terrific. So why don't we start with Janice in terms? We have of one more. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there he is. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Rich Jones from uh, Shore Acres. Uh, who's our last act representative? Oh, Jeff, Jeff that's you. Oh, I did it already. Je Jeff Richter from Act Engineers. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we we got you there. So yeah. okay. we got you now. Okay. And Rich, I'm sorry. What was your last name? Uh, Jones. Rich Jones. Okay. Okay. Hey, Joanne. Yes. My name is Mickey Raven. Uh, from Shore Acres. Mickey Raven? Yes. Okay. Hi, Mickey. Hi. Hi. It's Joe DeSenza from Shore Acres. Hi, this is Carlos Romino from Shore Acres. Hello, this is Scott Meisner from Seawood Harbor. This is Nelson Pena from Shore Acres as well. Jackie? Jackie Simon from Shore Acres. And Art down there? Art, where are you from? Uh, Halsey Drive and Shore Acres. Okay. And uh, Fred, were you about to speak? Yeah, Fred Golden from Seawood Harbor. Okay. And Ron Jampel, are you on? I'm here. Hi, Ron. How are you? Hi. Good. You how are you, Joanne? I'm very well, thanks. Um, didn't have this video on. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's a beautiful start. <laughs> <laughs> and the, so Galaxy, the person calling in from Galaxy A50, can you tell us who you are? Nope. I guess not today. All right, so, so everybody has the ability to mute and unmute themselves. So as we get into the presentation, it would be better if you muted. Um, and then uh, you can certainly unmute or use the raise your hand symbol um, when you have a question. Um, we're going to start by asking ACT engineers to share their screen and take us through a presentation that they've done specifically for your neighborhood tonight. Um, Alyssa and I uh, and the folks from ACT are you know, to, are here to uh, answer questions, um, which will take more at the end, unless it's very relevant to a slide, feel free, because we do want to have this as a, you know, engaged dialogue with you all. And, um, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your thoughts on the um, presentation, the thoughts on the data contained in the presentation, and your thoughts on, uh, you know, how we go forward with um, planning for, um, uh, better scenario than what's occurring in your in your neighborhoods now. Um, so with that said, if you're ready to roll right into it, I will ask Carol Basky from uh, ACT to um, give us a little uh, overview of what um, they'll be sharing with us tonight. Okay, so Jeanette, you can go to the next screen. Okay, we have to get this. Genetic, okay, there we go, <laughs> here we go. 
All right, so I'm Carol Besky. I'm the founder of Act Engineers. I started the company about 29 years ago, and I serve as the director of public involvement for the firm. And I've headed up public involvement projects that range from about $10,000 to a half a billion dollars in projects throughout New Jersey. I've worked on hundreds of projects for municipalities and for counties and for state agencies and by state agencies. And let me say, I would rather be with you all at Shore Acres Clubhouse tonight, uh, meeting you all in person. And I honestly wish that those of you who don't have your pictures up would share them with us because we would really like to meet you and see you. But it's the public involvement piece of this is so important to us because we get to talk to you. We're gonna hear your questions and, and your concerns. And we think we know a lot, but we never know as much as what the residents can tell us. And to introduce the rest of our team at ACT is Rob Corkage is a licensed professional engineer and professional planner. He's the president of ACT and he heads up the engineering at ACT. Jeff Richter is a licensed professional engineer and professional planner also, and he is the head of engineering. Um, both Rob and Jeff have many years of experience in flood mitigation and drainage issues. Both Rob and Jeff have worked and served as uh, consulting engineers for numerous counties and municipalities, as well as state departments. And they've also had experience as uh, not just consulting engineers, but working in-house as the engineer of record for, for municipalities. And next I'd like to introduce um, Eric Racina, who's a vice president at ACT, and he's the principal in charge of environmental services and permitting. And Janetta Dix is the Director of Environmental Services at, as, at, at ACT. And I just want to say they both, Janetta and Eric, are um, quite amazing in their success of records in obtaining environmental permits for our clients from federal and state agencies and from you know, DEP, from DOT, from Tidelands, as well as the Army Corps. Um, in fact, ACT has obtained several first time ever permits in the state from the State Department of in DEP as well as the Army Corps. And we're really quite proud of that because oftentimes we're told, well, it can't be done, it can't be permitted. And we kind of don't take no for an answer. So we're, we're, really, um, we're really glad to be working with Rick. Um, now I'm going to uh, answer uh, some questions on the scope of our work at um, for, for tonight's presentation. I think things are a little slow in moving forward here, Junetta. <laughs> um, so I know I've gotten a couple of emails that have said, you know, what is that scope of work? And so I just wanna briefly touch on that. Um, our, our initial scope was to uh, look at, to gather data, and then based on that data, we, we can move forward with the design or the conceptual design in this case for the flood prone areas in Rick Township. And as you know, engineering is based on data. So that in information is very important and we have to get it from the state and federal agencies as well as such as DEP with the existing LIDAR, the Army Corps, the Bureau of GIS, FEMA, and, um, and from Brick Township itself, who has a, a lot of records and, and amazing information on the existing infrastructure. So with that information, we were able Hi, Carol. To, yeah. I don't know why it's not paging down. Okay. I, I figured something was... <laughs> it's a good stall, though. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just kind of keep talking. Well, oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. No, it went. There we go. So anyway, based on that inf information, uh, we are preparing the mapping of the existing conditions. And that's basically what I was talking about, identifying... Um, you know, flood elevations, looking at bulkheads, looking at the storm sewers and topography, et cetera. So that, that then based on all of that information in all of the 13 neighborhoods that we are focusing on, we will be able to, we can move forward with, the, with conceptual engineering in that. And then based on that conceptual engineering, we're able to recommend solutions um, in final design for these specific neighborhoods. So um, now I'd like to turn it over to Jeff, and he is going to be uh, more specific. As I said, we had looked at the 13 study areas, and tonight, as you well know, we're concentrating on Shore Acres and Seawood Harbor 
Um, and Jeff is going to basically walk you through this map and talk a little bit more about what we're doing. Thanks, Jeff. Yes. Okay, the, this uh, slide shows or represents the 13 study areas that we're looking at. Uh, along the left side of the slide are all the uh, areas that are listed. Uh, Shore Acres and Seawood Harbor are one and two. That's this current meeting. There will be a meeting for Normandy Beach, and there will be one for number four, which is Beaver Dam Creek Watershed, and all those communities listed there. And then the last meeting would be Cherry Quay. Now, on the map on the right side uh, is an aerial uh, view of Brick Township. The, the communities that are being reviewed are in the yellow outline, and you can see your community there sort of in the center. Uh, both of them are next to each other for the most part. Um, and the numbers next to the yellow um, highlights represent the uh, study areas listed on the left side of the page. Now the blue areas that you'll see there is a representation of the low-lying areas within the township um, at an elevation of 1.4. Now <clears throat> and that's based on uh, aerial topography for the um, for the township. Um, June, if you could go to the next slide. So what we did with this information is we did an impact assessment of, I gotta find a way to get rid of this, hold on a sec. Part of the screen's blocking the slide, there we go, that's better. Okay, so <clears throat> we did a, a community flood impact assessment and basically what we were looking to identify is the number of properties or dwellings actually that were impacted. And we have two uh, scenarios here, uh, and we're looking at dwellings with compromised access. And now what compromised access means is that a, a dwelling that has either water in the roadway in front of the dwelling, which compromises access to the property, or properties that may be upland and not have flooded water in front of them, but the only way that they can exit their community is through a flooded roadway. So they're also considered impacted properties or compromised access, I should say. So we have two scenarios. Uh, one with the, the scenario on the left is impacted properties with less than or equal to two foot eleva a flood elevation. That's um, an elevation of two. Um, and those, the table on the left represents our short term design approaches. And you can see the shore acres has 167 dwellings with compromised access and Seawood Harbor has 136. So, so they're at the uh, one and three there. Um, the table on the right is impacted properties with greater than two foot to, to an elevation of 3.4 feet. And these would be the long-term design approaches. And you can see in this table that again, Shore Acres is number one with 345 units and Seawood Harbor including Snake Road, is third with 136 um, comp uh, dwellings with compromised access. So that was, this was how we rated the communities as far as uh, how many people would be impacted. So if you go to the next slide, June. Okay, this, this sl slide is based on the USGS Barnegat, uh, the, the gauge at uh, Manilokan, the Manilokan Tide gauge. Um, and it's NAVD 88. What, the, what NAVD 88 is, is just a datum that's used by surveyors for elevation. Um, and that's when, when we're talking about elevation today, we'll be talking about the, the same elevation, NAVD 88. So that all the numbers that we're showing here are all the same elevation. So that's where this data came from. And you'll notice along the bottom is the years and it goes from 2006 to 2020. And then up the left side is the elevation in NAVD 88. It starts at zero and goes up to number four. Now what the blue represents is the average ebb and flow, if you will, of the tides over the course of that 14 years. Uh, the blue would represent that. So you can see the high tides go up to a point. Um, and actually we've cut off the, uh, uh, the low tide portion on the bottom half just for clarity because it's uh, below zero. Um, you'll note that there's a gap in the, uh, the tide gauge data from roughly uh, late 2015 to early 2017. The gauge was not operational then. 
and USGS didn't, does not have any information for that particular time period. So um, back to the blue portion of the graph, you can see the peaks and there's various dates and, and the elevation associated with them where they've hit those peaks. So what, we're, what we've looked at is how can we get the most improvement for the short term? Um, and we're looking at a design elevation of 1.4 to 2.0, uh, which would be the yellow band. And as you can see above elevation two, there's fewer, there's a few peaks and valley that go over the yellow over the course of that 14 years. Now to address those particular flooding issues would require significant, um, significant improvements. So we focused on the design, the more frequent uh, elevations between 1.4 and 2 for in moving forward with uh, our conceptual uh, ideas. And then you'll notice that the last thing on this slide, you notice at the bottom there's in the center there, it says average tide elevation. And that's the red line is the average tide elevation. Now with sea level rise, there's projected to be a 1.75, uh, which is one and three quarter inch rise in uh, sea level per decade. And we're seeing that in the data that's shown here. Uh, when we reviewed the data from 2006 to 2020, that's basically what you have. Okay, next slide, Janetta. Janetta. I'm trying. Okay. I don't want to hit it too many times. I'm afraid it'll jump ahead. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay. Now this slide shows the tidal range for uh, Shore Acres and Seawood Harbor. And you, you can see on there, the um, you got the MHHW, the mean high high water at 1.33. The MHW is mean high water at 1.09 feet. Those are the high tides and the rest of the tidal range is shown the mean high tide, mean low tide, mean low low, uh, et cetera, which aren't as important because they're not causing the flooding. But then you'll see on the slide in the red dash lines, the bottom line is shore acres, the lowest roadway elevation is 0.87. Okay, and the upper red line is Seawood Harbor, your lowest road elevation is 1.39 feet. You're right at the mean high, high water line in that particular neighborhood. And for both neighborhoods, you can see that the mean high, high water is gonna flood the, some of the roadways. That's why we're targeting, one of the reasons we're targeting the um, short-term concept design elevation of a range of 1.4 to 2.0. Okay, next slide. Okay, this slide, this slide shows um, shore acres and I'll describe what uh, the various colors and, and numbers mean um, first. Um, it's an aerial photograph of the, of the neighborhood. The, the black area, as you can tell, is the canals and the, and the bay. The blue represents the areas of uh, land that are flooded during a uh, less than or equal to two foot elevation, meaning that the waters are up to an elevation of two. Now the, the orange that you see on there represents existing storm uh, structures and the numbers represent the elevation of those structures, which are at the low points in the roadways. So as you can see for an elevation uh, two storm, you've got flooding of um, flooding of a number of the roadways. So, so Jeanette, go to the next uh, slide. Okay, so what this is basically showing the same flooding as the last slide with superimposed over that is yellow, which indicates the low lying road areas that would be less than an elevation of two. So these would be the areas that would, could be looked at for improvement so that uh, we could get above the elevation of two. Next slide, Janetta. This, this slide shows um, the flood elevation 
less than or equal to 3.4, which would be more along the lines of a major flooding event. Um, and as you recall from the, the title chart, there was only one elevation that went up to 3.4, aside from you know, major storm events like Sandy and Hurricane Irene, et cetera. So other than those type of events, this is a type of flooding that would occur at if the waters were to reach 3.4. Um, preparing for these would require, this are part of the long-term flood mitigation measures uh, would be um, required to address this type of flooding. And again, you can see the spot elevations throughout the community. This slide is um, Seawood Harbor. It shows the community and Snake Road coming in. And again, the black is the harbor and the channels around the, around the dwellings. The blue represents flooding of land areas. Um, this is at elevation less than or equal to two. And you could go to the next elevate, next slide. Again, this slide in yellow shows the areas where the topography is less than two. Again, it would be areas where the roadway um, could be looked at uh, for elevation so that it would be passable during a, a late elevation two storm, storm event or storm or tide surge. Um, and the next slide will show, again, like uh, for the other neighborhood, what happens at an elevation of 3.4, more of a major flood flooding type event. Again, improvements for this type of situation would be more of a long-term flood mitigation measures. Okay, next slide. Okay, so for shore acres and Seawood Harbor, the conceptual flood mitigation design approaches that we've identified is that we've got short-term design approaches and long-term design approaches. Um, the short-term design approaches are to design for elevation less than or equal to two feet. Okay, and um, up to elevation two, floods approximately 1,500 plus minus hours per year. So and under long-term design approaches would be um, tidal events greater than two feet for, for design elevation. And that creates flooding roughly 60 plus minus hours per year. So for the short term at Shore Acres, the, the, the conceptual mitigation measures that we're looking at or investigating are inst installation of check valves, raising of roadways, and raising of critical bulkheads. In Seawood Harbor, including Snake Road, we would be looking at for the short term, raising roads and raise critical bulkheads. Now, critical bulkheads would be bulkheads um, that are creating an end run, if you will, um, where everything else is elevated, but for because of a lower bulkhead, it's gotta be raised, otherwise water is gonna end run the, the improvements. Under long-term approaches for shore acres, we've got raising roads and properties, uh, raising bulkheads, and possibly the installation of pump stations. For Seawood Harbor, we'll be raising roads and properties and raising bulkheads. Okay, there's a few pictures of uh, those at the bottom. Oh, there you go. Okay, next one. So raising roads, this is a, just a, a short sketch, if you will, that kind of shows what, what the raising of the roads uh, could accomplish uh, to mitigate tidal flooding. We've got the existing roadway um, shown in a darker line at the bottom that's labeled. And then the proposed elevated roadway would be the orange or red line at the top. The blue would be flooded areas. So as you can see in the existing condition, the roadway, the shoulder and portions of the property are flooded. Um, if in raising the roadways, you could achieve uh, the road being out of the flooded areas, portions of the property might be out of the flood area, but you could still have, under certain tidal events, you could still have some water in the gutter, but it would be uh, more minimal, typical to um, you know a smaller storm event. What this what this does though, it improves vehicular access during normal tide events. Uh, may require driveways, sidewalks, and yard improvements on private properties so that we can they can be tied into the properties. Uh, stormwater impacts and mitigation impacts would have to be addressed at final design when more data is available concerning elevations uh, of the properties, storm source systems, et cetera. 
and, the, and it would also require neighborhood buy-in, again, because there could be uh, improvements that are required on individual properties. Okay, next slide. This slide is just a, shows conceptually what the road raising could look like. Now to explain, the white area would be the crowning of the road, if you will, kind of showing how the new cross section would be. Uh, the blue would be where water would, could potentially still be standing if we're in an area where the, the um, existing garages, first floors, don't permit for you know, elevating the edges of the road as, as well as the center line. So it's potent, the photo on the left shows a situation where the road can't be raised as much. So you might still have some uh, standing water in the shoulder of the roadway and on the properties, but you would have clear access to egress the neighborhood down the center portion of the roadway. The photo on the right would show a situation where the homes are and garage floors are higher so that the roadway could be elevated and the properties enough so that to totally um, eliminate the flooding on the roadways. Again, it's, it's more of a function of what the actual elevation of the surrounding properties are and what, what can be accomplished. Next. This sketch shows conceptually what check valves could do. Um, it's something that can be used in certain situations depending upon the soil types and at the end, the height of the flooding and, and so forth. Um, this sketch shows um, two homes, obviously. It's, it shows inlets with gutters in the center to either side of the road that ties into a pipe that goes out to the water body through the bulkhead, which is the green line. If a check valve is installed, depending upon the tidal conditions on the outside of the valve, um, you know, the pipe may or may not hold water. Uh, at low tide elevations. If the pipe is submerged all the time and, and even during low tide, some of the water is going to stay in the pipe at all times. The, the idea of the check valve is that when the tide rises, it hits the check valve and closes the valve so that no more water can enter the pipe. So in this sketch, it's showing the tide or the, you know, the tide on the other side of the bulkhead is higher than the properties, yet the properties are staying dry. There's a, there's a number of uh, considerations that have to be taken into account when utilizing check valves, but during final design, it would be able to uh, determine if these type of facilities are appropriate for the particular um, area. Next. These are some pictures from uh, Seawood Harbor. Uh, the one on the left, you can see uh, you've got the roadway and a short area to the um, to the bay. And on the, on the picture on the right, we've got a, a bulkhead that ends um, whereby water could do the end run I was talking about before. So examples of improvements for this type of situation would could be bulkheads, could be sh living shorelines, rock revertments, or other type of um, measures to create separation, uh, a vertical separation to um, separate the bay waters from uh, the infrastructure. They may be coupled with road raising or using check valves or, or other things, or it could be a combination of uh, measures that are utilized. It's gonna depend on the actual areas and the final design for each area. Okay, next. Okay, so the next step, thank, thank you, Jeff. So. Uh, we, we at ACT Engineers need to continue to move forward with some more topographic mapping that will be specific to the areas where that will move into final um, engineering design for those areas. We're also working with BRIC to identify and go after funding sources and those funding sources examples are the United States Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, New Jersey Office of Emergency, Emergency Management, and in New Jersey DOT with uh, local aid, so the, and, and uh, any other sources that we can possibly find. And once uh, we can secure some of that funding, it will be, you know, able, it will enable Rick to know how they're going to budget and move forward also with, with their um, next steps. 
And the other thing that we're, we would like to do is recommend to the township the, some ordinance revisions that will meet some of the standards or, or at least the minimum height requirements that Jeff was just, just describing that will eliminate uh, much of the uh, flooding that occurs. So, and in terms of how we, how everything moves forward with uh, the strategy, the allocation of funding and the implementation, um, I am sure that Brick will, will be looking at all of this stuff that we have presented and they will determine how we move forward. So that concludes our presentation and um, now I guess we go to the question and, and discussion part of the thing and Joanne, you're controlling that. You're gonna handle that. The folks, um, we're gonna leave the slide up in case anybody in from the public wants to refer to um, you know, one of these slides, um, but we'd like love to hear from the public. So folks from Shore Acres, you can unmute yourself and um, you know, just feel free to to ask us some, ask some questions. Yeah, this is Joe DeCenza. Hi, Joe. Drum Point Road. Drum Point Road, okay. Uh, my question is, I, I know you wanna raise the roads or looking to raise the roads. Wouldn't gutters be appropriate in the roads? Right now we get ponding of uh, stagnant water every time it rains. If we had better drainage or better, um, um, what do I want to say? Um, where the water would flow to the catch basins. Right now, they're not uh, level, if you will, but there's no pitch to the catch basins. It's just ponding, and usually right in front of everybody's driveway. If they raise the road, it should be pitched to the to the uh, to the catch basins. And wouldn't um, gutters be appropriate? Well, when you raise the road, that's gonna give you the opportunity to, to create slope. A lot of the areas now, like you said, are really flat. Um, and this is common everywhere, not just in your neighborhood. It's, you know, where there's flat roads, you have a tendency to have ponding in the edge of the road. So by raising the roads, it gives you an opportunity to create pitch for one. And then if there is still a relatively flat slope, Concrete gutters could be installed as part of the final design to get the water to the storm uh, system. And as you know, coupled with that, it may be necessary when you're when we're looking at or looking at final design that um, you know additional stormwater uh, system upgrades might be required. But that's not going to be able to be determined until you know nearing uh, more of a final design phase. Now, isn't it Drum Point Road is a county road? So does the county have to get involved in this also? Yeah, Alyssa, do you want yeah. to chime in on that or? Yes, the county would have to authorize the elevation of Drum Point Road. And our experience with the county has been, if uh, Alyssa puts together um, information as to why we're requesting something and it makes sense that they're happy to hear from us, especially if uh, we are taking responsibility for funding it. Would, would you say that's correct, Alyssa? I would concur, yes. Okay, thanks. Well, well, they just paved it a couple of months ago. Yeah, but they they won't elevate it at the time that they paved no, they it. Just, no, they didn't. Yeah, they were just so doing we, a resurfacing project. If we enter into an elevation project, we have to repave the road. So I don't think they'll mind us doing the construction as long as we leave it in a the paved condition we found it just at a different height right agreed right, so who else has a question from uh, Shore Acres Seaward Harbor Joanne it looks like there's a couple people with their hands raised okay so let's see Carlos Firmino hi Carlos hi uh, how's, how's everyone doing very um, well thank you very good I have a question uh, I'm building a house at one of the ends of uh, Bernard Drive. And my house is the last house at the end of the, the, the roadway. And I'm at the, about at the stage where in another maybe month or two, I will have to start building the driveway with a slope to the new elevation of the house. So should I hold off the last eight foot of driveway until we know what we're doing? Or should I go ahead and finish it? And then I have to 
demolish it again to bring it up or make it higher in case the roadway will come up. I, I would, yeah, I would proceed. I proceed with your construction of your driveway for a few reasons. It, it could be months to years before we have funding and address the specific area of the street in front of your home. Plus, when we do these elevation projects, we will take the responsibility to reconstruct your driveway in daylight back onto your property. Like we're not, we won't go in your backyard and elevate your bulkhead and fix any flooding problems there, but we will take usually to the right of way line, your front property line, sometimes a little bit further on the private property, just so we can tie into the existing surrounding grades. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, I just was wondering if it was something that I could do in order to uh, help the process in the future. But yeah. in that case, if it takes years, then might as well I finish what I gotta do. You know? Okay, all right, well, thank you. Fred, is there a question from Fred? Hi, um, so you identify, uh, Ben, Fred Golden from Seawood Harbor. You identify the, I think the area in our, uh, in our area that's most uh, uh, well understood, which is Snake Road. There are two other areas that I didn't see you directly address. Uh, Rochester Drive has a couple of storm sewers that are always filled with uh, water and that do flood significantly on a, on a mean high or a mean high high tide. And we were thinking the check valves might be appropriate there. So something perhaps to think about. I didn't see that uh, addressed anywhere. And then- Melissa, the, Melissa, can you discuss where we're putting the check, check valves in in that area? So I didn't have Rochester Drive on my list for check valves, mm -hmm. but I will add it because this is why I asked for a little more funding than my current estimates. The new sites would pop up. Um, but I will, I'll get pipe sizes for there and we'll include those and get check valves in those pipes as soon as we can. All right, so tomorrow night for everybody's reference, the uh, capital ordinances for 2020 are on the Township Council agenda. Uh, and part of that capital ordinance is the uh, purchase of the uh, delivery of ch uh, check valves, um, which the resolution going out to bid for that is also on for tomorrow night. So those will, um, are not far off from being uh, acquired and uh, hopefully installed. And, that, and I appreciate you bringing that up this way we can get Rochester Drive on there. The other area is something that um, I've spoken to Alyssa about or emailed about, which is the uh, Bayshore Road bulkhead. Is that part of repairing that? Is that part of this plan or is that all, already on the docket? That's already on the docket. Okay, great. I just have a quick question. Uh, is is Vanard Drive, you know, the, the area of uh, the end by the beach for Shore Acres Club also on the list of the check valves? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Ron Jampel, you have um, some questions? Yeah, just a quick couple of quick ones. Uh, timing wise, we saw that you know Normandy Beach you're moving forward with getting trying applying for funding there. How long was the process that took to get Normandy Beach from when you decided that road elevation and, and valve be added? Yeah, so that, that that was not on our radar to apply for the DOT for that um, area this year. However, Tom River was in touch with uh, the state, the DOT, they were looking for a shared service. Um, that's what the, the state is being most appealed about. And they also saw success uh, in Tom's River with some roadway elevations right in that area. So Tom's River came to us and said, you know, we got this call. It seems like it would be a great project with Brick be willing to participate. So that's how that came about. Uh, we didn't want to pass the opportunity, especially with the feedback they had gotten from the state. Um, so that, that's how that particular project came about. Um, and we hope to do more of those in all of our neighborhoods. So, so how do you see timing wise this going as far as, uh, well, Shore Acres, because we're speaking of Shore Acres. Well, um, we have the check valves pretty much in queue for uh, in the near future. Alyssa, what else does our capital budget include in this area? I thought there was a um, roadway elevation out this way. The intersection of Venard and Mathis, that triangle area, it's like elevation 0.83, I think. Um, so the elevation of that intersection is included for funding this year. Okay, good. That, that definitely needs it for sure. Yes. Yep. Uh, Did that answer that, Ron? 
Yes, it did. No, that's you. You pick. You picked a good one to start. <laughs> Roadway wise, that's for sure. We, we think so too, and thank you. So I see Janice has a question. I do. Um, Janice Martin from Shore Acres. I'm curious about the uh, bulkhead uh, situation for people applying for permits now to do bulkheads. I understand that Brick did have a new ordinance reg uh, regarding the height of the bulkheads. And so you have a homeowner that's going to get a new bulkhead is going to be required to go higher, but you have adjacent homeowners with lower bulkheads. That doesn't, it seems kind of that it's the, the homeowner that's going to do the bulkhead now is going to have extra costs when the border is still going to come over the neighbor's bulkheads. Can you explain that, Alyssa? We have to start somewhere. Okay. So, so it, we, this is, we're starting now. I wish we started 10 years ago, but we're starting now. Okay. It just seems uh, unfair, like someone going to do their bulkhead now, and they have adjacent homeowners with brand new bulkheads that are not going to be changed for 30 years. And uh, it just, I was wondering about the rationale behind that, because I understand if we could raise them all, it would be nirvana, but right. <laughs> I can't. I, I have to go. I have to go under the hope that even if you have a newer bulkhead and you it'll last 50 years, God willing, you will get tired of water coming over your bulkhead when you see it's not coming over your neighbors. And maybe you'll put a wall there or something, but something to help block the water from inundating the roadways in the rest of the neighborhood. Okay. I just I can't regulate. I can't force everyone to build a retaining wall in their rear yard, but I can regulate the minimum height of a bulkhead that's going to be constructed or replaced. Um, and speaking of bulkheads, we did get a question submitted uh, via a public meeting questions email address, which is about the Seawood Harbor bulkhead. Alyssa, I did think I forwarded that to you. Can you touch on this? Fred had sent it in to us. That is the Bayshore bulkhead, and that is in okay. the Capital Improvement Program. Okay, good. So, Fred, um, can I ask, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Terrific. And Ron Jampel, I think you thought of a second question, didn't you? <laughs> I got lots. I got a second. <laughs> okay, you're up. The, the, first of all, this is all being recorded and can be listened to again after the fact. It is being recorded, correct. And they're going into our archives of um, Zoom meetings. So, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Because a couple of people have texted me that they can't get on. I guess it was for some reason the link was removed. After maybe at seven o'clock was removed because only future calendars show up now on uh, for the Zoom meeting. But as long as they can get the recording, then at least they'll be able to catch up. Okay. Uh, but, okay my question regarding I know there's a mention of pump stations, and I know Alyssa, you had mentioned it once before briefly. At a, you know when we when we met up one of these <laughs> one of the thousand times when we meet up. Uh, what exactly? Uh, are you have you looked at doing pump stations elsewhere or is this just one of these concepts that you're saying we're going to look into it so if you could build put a pump station anywhere it's very difficult because the water you'd have to pump is coming from private properties all of the coastline or the majority of the coastline in all the residential areas in brick is private so that there's no until the, the bulkheads that are a higher elevation, long term, a pump station doesn't make engineering sense, and fiscally, it's quite expensive. Okay, no, it was it was mentioned as one of the alternatives. That's why I was just curious. Thank you, um, Dorothy. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, actually, this is her husband, Ian. Uh, okay. Quick questions. I'm one of the uh, Shore Acres, one of the lucky recipients um, of the Bernard and Mathis Drive uh, flooding uh, when it gets ridiculous goes through my garage. Um, so quick question, you talked about some, some funding about stuff getting done this year. Uh, if you could just explain to me a little bit about what, what's gonna happen, um, number one. And number two, any raising of the roadways, is there, without gutters, is there a chance that we get flooded through the garage even more? Um, so I can, you know, I can talk about the timing of the, the capital projects that we've discussed, some of the things that were included. Uh, Alyssa talked about the intersection that's funded in the um, 2020 capital. Uh, the Bayshore fund, uh, bulkhead is funded and the um, catch basins are uh, funded. So, um, or flapper valves, check valves, I'm sorry, um, are funded. So, 
Uh, those will, the process is, the ordinances uh, have second reading of public hearing tomorrow night. And then um, sometime in uh, around a month from now, the funding is available. Um, so that's why we are also tomorrow night issuing a request for bids for the valves um, so that we don't have to wait. As soon as the money is available to us, we can get started. Um, we would also get started on the design of those other two projects, which we can't authorize to design until the money is um, in place. And that's not technically for uh, 30 days until after the public hearing. So that's the timeline. Those are the capital projects that we uh, have funding for. And Alyssa, I think the other question was more technical in nature was more for you. That's the elevation of Mathis and Shore Drive. Yes. And the replacement of the bulkhead at Bayshore Drive. Hello? I, I, did, yes. Did you, do you live at the intersection of Mathis and, and Bernard? Yeah, or? yeah I, I'm 114 Mathis. Okay. So when we design a roadway elevation project, we do everything we can to avoid flooding near the vicinity of the house. And sometimes that might mean regrading on your side yards or even making the road drain through your side yard, away from your house and your garage, towards your bulkhead, if that's feasible. But we, we won't raise the road higher than a garage elevation that's adjacent to it for that very reason. I have a point about that. Mm -hmm. Excuse, I, I, I didn't hear a question, I'm sorry. Yes, my name is Kevin McGuire. Hi. In Shore how are you? Good, how are you doing, Kevin? Good. Uh, the point you just made about not raising the, the uh, elevation of the roads higher than any uh, adjacent uh, garages obviously makes sense. What concerns me relative to that is that a, a number of homes were built post Sandy. Uh, we have been anticipating road uh, raising for uh, in just inside of 10 years, I guess. And uh, a lot of these homes were built post Sandy and I'm concerned about what that gentleman pointed out. Uh, I believe he was a uh, a representative of ACT. We got into this a little late. Uh, he, when, he was, when he was referring to that cross-section detail of the possible raising of roads relative to adjacent properties, he did mention that some of the roads couldn't be raised uh, too much uh, relative to the adjacent homes with their driveways that are low. Uh, so some of the homes will suffer. A lot of the homes in the, in, in the neighborhood here were anticipating the raising of the roads. And so their driveways and the elevation finished grades of their, their properties were raised accordingly. Uh, what disturbed me as I watched some of this building taking place in the last few years was brand new homes were built and the grades established at the existing grade uh, of, of, that, of that property. So there are some properties that will be directly affected by the raising of roads, which would then prohibit the, the raising of some of these roads sufficiently because of these low-lying grades of properties and homes. But ironically, some of these properties were recently built. So I'm disturbed at to, as to how some of these homes were built and went through the engineering process with everything that all of us know uh, was, was uh, 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 scrutinized through the engineering process. I'm, I'm, I'm confused as to why a lot of these homes were built brand new and properties established at the low-lying grade, not taking into account the eventual raising of these roads. So it seemed counterproductive to me that a lot of these homes were, were built in such a way and the grades established with no anticipation of an eventual road raising, if I've made myself clear. I brought this up to you one other time in the meeting, uh, Joanne and Alyssa, you may recall. Mm -hmm. We had no ordinance that regulated it. 
And people made their own decisions, usually because they wanted a full garage you could walk around in, plus probably a half story. They wanted to max everything out. They were spending money to lift or to reconstruct. And a lot of them wanted to max out their space and they didn't want to elevate under the garage. We'll do the best we can with elevating the roads. And if we have to do some work with private properties or talk to people about changing elevations in their slabs, we will. But nobody at this point should have a crawl space or a garage or a slab that is at or below the outside grade, which is huge because that means you're not trapping water under the house and creating a stagnant situation. Oh, correct. I mean, obviously no one would want to see that. But I mean, you're, you're un underneath your house right now. I hate to say this, but if you rebuilt and you rebuilt properly, it should be designed to flood. You're in a flood zone. They want it designed to flood. It's flood resistant materials. It drains to the outside. It's vented to equalize hydrostatic pressure and it's for storage. So that, that's why they want you to build your areas below the design flood elevation, flood proofed. Oh, oh all right. I mean, but that's, we'll do the best that we can. But I mean, even with these things that we're doing for the valves, with elevating the roads, we're gonna help you out in more situations that now than you have now with respect to the roads flooding, but we're not gonna eliminate every flooding event. I mean, you saw it yourself on when they had the lines on the tide gauge. Even if we design around elevation too, that gauge goes above elevation too from time to time. Well, I'm fully aware of that. It, it, it's just that I was confused as to why grades were established on brand new redeveloped properties with no uh, foresight as to the eventual raising of the road. Uh, I, I believe that the engineering department would have, would have been aware of the, the potential for the eventual raising of the road, yet some of these finished grades that were established uh, don't really lend, it, lend itself to that. Mr. McGuire, there was no requirement to meet a certain elevation. We advised anyone that asked to go a foot above the street with your new slab, but there was no requirement setting a minimum elevation grade. Point taken, okay, if, if they were, obviously point taken, if, if they were advised of this and chose not to do that, then understood, okay. And, and most people had to fill their crawl spaces, so we told them, you wanna be about a foot above the street. It wasn't an uncommon thing for us to say. Okay, fair enough on that matter, yeah. Um, Scott, do you uh, have a question? I do. Um, my name's Scott Meisner. I'm from Rochester Drive in Seawood Harbor. Um, and I think you kind of have been kind of answering it, right. walking along with it. And, mm -hmm. and that was, um, I'm actually looking to put in a new home. And I'm, the first thing is I'm going to be talking to Brick. I'm, I have been, I've talked to two, four guys about uh, putting bulkheads in. So if I go to put a bulkhead in now, it's going to probably be with a higher elevation of the bulkhead. The Correct. Height. Okay, so you've already got that accomplished. And the same way, if I do the house, you're gonna give me a good idea of how high I can bring the, the slab underneath it? Yes. So we'll all be part of it? Okay, and then my last question, they actually showed the picture, one of the pictures earlier, and that was the Seawood Harbor where the road is right next to the bay there. That's a, that is owned by a private homeowner. The, the prior homeowner, purchased all of that as lots adjacent to his property. He, I don't know what happened, but he attempted to bulk it a while ago. And for some reason he didn't get the permits. That is rapidly deteriorating. Um, so that it's getting very close to the road. All we need is a wind blowing right now. We're getting water up onto the road. Is that so, going to be his responsibility? Is that something that, because it's a new homeowner now, it's not the same gentleman. So we've been working with the new homeowner, Mr. Urbe, or Uribe, Urbe, Colleen Uribe and her husband. Okay. Um, we've been working with them to come up with something that, that they can live with permitting wise. I know they'd love to bulkhead the property and develop two, three new lots, but I told them it's not, the DEP is not in the business of issuing new permits to fill in land anymore. Um, right. So we're trying to come up with some sort of revetment that they can live with. We're gonna help them get the permits but they had, they've agreed to construct it. They understand there's a stabilization problem and they're losing land, okay. but they don't, they'd rather just do it and not get permits. We're like, no, 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 we'll help you 
facilitate the permits and help you figure out what is permissible and is not permissible in accordance with the DEP guidelines. Okay, and is- So we are working with them. Okay, good. And is, is I think they call it riprap, where they put the rocks out. Is that a viable option on in some of those areas? Or does yes. it, it is? Living okay. shorelines or riprap, yes. Okay, I didn't think that was something that was permitted in the past. Yes, like, it's, a, it's always been those. permitted. I think most people just prefer bulkheads. You know, okay. you get more land when you use a bulkhead. Okay, yeah, because I've been there for, for not aging myself, but almost 60 years. And uh, <laughs> all that land has just deteriorated so fast, um, you know, from when I grew up and it's just continuing to do it. And I, that's why a couple of the properties, I think Rip Rat would be a good alternative for some of those without having to put the bulkheads in. So, okay. And I think they might be township property as well. The one at the end is township property, yes. Yeah, the one, I think the, the one video that, or image they showed, I think there's about three or four township ones there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, no other hands are raised. Is there anyone with a question? Um, no. So um, I, have, I have a question and a comment. Okay. Who's this? This is Art uh, on Halsey Drive in Shore Acres. Hi, Art. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Good. Um, Good. We've had. Uh, two events where water came over the bulkhead. One was Irene, of course, the other one was Sandy. All of our flooding comes from the, the one drain that we have at the very end of the street, about 75 feet from my house. All the flooding comes from that outfall pipe in high tides. It just comes through the pipe in. Now, check valve is gonna work great, so I'm hoping that Halsey Drive is on the list for check valves. Um, now, I've had this conversation with the mayor. Alyssa, I might have even talked to you once or twice years back, and that's great. I'm hoping that we're on the list for that. My question is this. We've got really, at our end of the street, we've got one outfall pipe for, for storm runoff. The other one is all the way at the beginning of the street um, that um, actually dumps into the, the uh, dead end of Halsey Lagoon. Are you going to consider putting any more drains in through private property, you know, getting right away and things like that to help alleviate some of the water that comes to the end of the street where we live? Anything like I, that? I don't know. It's going to be on a case by case basis when we determine where these low garages are, where we can have low points, what their elevation can be, and then we'll determine where we need more drainage. Uh, you know, raising our street where we are, so many of the properties are going to get flooded if you raise the crown of the street. Ours will be one. Now, we've elevated since Sandy, you know, and yeah, our cross space can take water, not a problem. My garage can't, though, okay? So, and I'm about maybe three or four inches higher with the garage floor than we were prior to Sandy. So, elevating our, or raising the crown of our row is going to kill us unless I have to raise my entire great in my property which you know i really don't want to go for and i'll probably be one of the guys that'll say no i'm not going to go for that and hold up the whole project on the street um but i don't want to do that because i love my neighbors but um are, are we on the list for a check now melissa hopefully yes yes you are you were one of my first <laughs> okay great you're going to come down because when they put the when they changed the outfall pipe at the end of the street they really took away the catch basin and what we have is a big pipe at street level. It I don't think that's an official, but that's a whole other sidebar, but I don't think that's an official outlet. I think that's somebody, somebody installed that. Yeah, well, that's the neighbor down at the end of the street that uh, wanted that to happen. But uh, as long as we're on a list for a check valve, thank you very much. That's great. Thank, thank you. you. Hello, can I ask a question, please? Sure. This is Mickey speaking again. I'd like to ask the question this way. I don't know, Joanne, if it was you or somebody else, but we were talking about the timing, and I'll just use Bernard and Mathis as an example. I'd like to put it to you this way, because all the whys and the wherefores were explained as to what has to be done and all these things and put out the bid. Here's the question, my way. If everything goes right, that could go right, when would you expect work to be done, started at Bernard and Mathis? That's question one. 
And if everything goes wrong, it could go wrong. When would you expect work to start there? If the question is asked fairly, if it's not, I apologize. Um, no, it's, it's it's fairly. So, um, Alyssa, we have not retained an engineering firm to do that design. Is that correct? No, CME has the design. They have the survey. Fantastic. So the design is and it's fully complete and ready to go to bid. No, it's not without capital funding. So we have the okay. capital funding on. I haven't seen a final design from them either. So I don't know if they were waiting to finalize the design for funding to see how much road they could do. But they have the survey and have a layout of like general elevations. That's great. That means the project is farther along than um, most that are in the queue for capital. So we've got design engineers working on the design. The capital money is being finalized tomorrow night, released in 30 days. So uh, Alyssa would notify them once the capital budget was adopted tomorrow night that um, they need to prioritize the completion of that design so that they can go out to bid. Um, so I would expect going out to bid would happen with an award of contract sometime this fall. Am I being too uh, optimistic, Alyssa? That would, sorry, my phone keeps switching. Um, that would be your best case scenario timeline if everything went that went right, could go right. And if everything went wrong, that could go wrong. It's probably a year from that. I appreciate that. That's what I call a specific answer to my specific question, for which I thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So a couple more people jumped in. Um, do uh, I, some of those folks have any questions? Some of the new guests on the call? Yeah, I'm a new guest, Suzanne Seawood Harbor. Suzanne, did you say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, was Snake Road discussed at all, the flooding on that? Yes, it was. Okay. Would you mind giving me a quick synopsis of the plan? Who wants to do that, Alyssa or somebody from ACT? Jeff, do you want, Jeff, do you want to go back to that slide? And is she, no, uh, is she, I'm not even sure she can see. She, no, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I, I couldn't, oh. that's why I'm late. I was trying to get on Zoom, so I just did the phone. Okay. Well, as you probably know, there, there's, there's, several low areas along Snake Road into the neighborhood that would need to be um, looked at and possibly improved. Is there a plan? Not that I'm aware of at this point, other than uh, our conceptual work. Right, so in terms of the plan, that has been identified as an area and one of the many areas in Seawood Harbor, a section of town that um, is low is low lying roadway. How many roadways are there in the Seawood Harbor area that you've identified at this flood level act? Uh, you've got Snake Road. There's uh, the intersection down near, uh, you know, in there. Um, portions of Lake Point Drive and I think Bayshore down there, along there. In there. Yep. I, don't, I don't think those are any of our streets. We don't have a base shore. So we have Rochester. Um, what's the, I'm on Rochester what's Drive. No, base shore Drive is the street. If you drove Snake Road till it ended, you went in and turned down Hamilton, you would drive to uh, base shore Drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nothing on Rochester? No. Uh, Rochester's check valves, which were just discussed tonight. And um, that would be added to the list to install check files to prevent the back tidal flooding. What's check file mean? It's a check valve. valve. Check oh, check valve. valve. Okay. So you want to describe those, Alyssa, briefly? So they're a valve that goes inside the pipe, or they also make a model that goes on the end of the pipe that are designed to close when there's more pressure outside the pipe than inside the pipe. So when the tidal elevation is high, the valve closes, preventing tidal salt water from backwashing through the pipe, up through the inlet grates and into the street. Well, that's smart. Do we have those installed already and you have to check them? No, 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 you don't have them yet. We're, we oh, put so those we might get them. Funding. Yeah, we're, You'll we're, get them. Yes, they're funded in the capital budget, which is being finalized tomorrow night. And we're also going out to bid. As a municipality, we're required to do that. Um, for the purchase and delivery of the check valves. That's also on tomorrow night's council agenda. Now, where would they be installed? Underwater? 
Yes, in the pipes. So they're town pipes. It's it's on the streets or is it on people's properties or a little bit of both. Okay. And then is that how you want to remediate uh, Snake Road? Snake Road doesn't have drainage. Snake Road, the only way to remediate Snake Road, in my opinion, is elevation. Make it higher. Yeah, what What does that mean? How would you make the road, like you'd pave up and up and up? Possibly. Like how do you elevate a road? <laughs> Possibly. Can that take us to that slide that shows uh, how roadway elevations work? I can't say. I don't think oh, she can sorry, see. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. That's okay. Actually, but she might want to look at the uh, recording from this afterward. I think it would give yeah. you a really good idea of what we're talking about. So if you just check on the website, you'll be able to see what we're talking about later. I think that might Which, help. Which um, brick website? The Township of Brick, bricktownship.net. Okay. All right. Sounds awesome. Thanks for all your hard work. You're very welcome. And you know, if you have all right. follow up questions, Suzanne or anybody on the call or any of your neighbors, you can use the public meeting questions email address. And I think okay. that the notice for the meeting, you can send questions there and we'll continue to answer them. There it is for anybody. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's, a, um, that's the ACT engineer's uh, email address, but we also have one here at uh, the town, public meeting questions at bricktownship.net. So you can send okay, questions what there. What department are you in? Uh, I'm in administration. Alyssa, our town oh. engineer is also on the phone. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, thank you all for thinking of us, and uh, we in Seawood Harbor appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. All yeah. right. I'm going to hang up now. Okay. Unless thanks. somebody. Okay. 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 This is, hey, Alyssa, this is Mickey. Famous, famous last question. Oh. Is there any question that any of you have not heard any of us ask that if you were one of us homeowners, you would have asked. I can't think of any. What's what's the strategy? What's the timeline? What's funded? I think those are really what everybody wants to know. Sounds good. Can ask for more than that. Thank you. You're welcome, Mickey. Do we have any other public questions? I don't see any hands raised. Does anybody else want to unmute and ask a quick question? Hi. Hi. Uh, Tony Almeida from Seawood Harbor. Again, uh, if you mm. covered it and uh, I can see it in the recording, I'll, I'll go back and see that. Just wondered, uh, Alyssa, one of the last times you and I had met, you had talked about how the town, uh, how um, there was a master plan going on from uh, from the South Jersey on up on how we were going to address flooding, the uh, um, Army oh, the Corps of Engineers Army. and all that. The did Back Bay cover? study? Yeah, yes. did you cover all that already today? We didn't touch on the Back Bay study. This is independent of any study they're doing. Their study okay. could take 10 years, 20 years. Okay. And, and I heard that they stopped funding the study. Oh. That the study was put on hold based on all the money being reallocated um, due to COVID and things that other things the government's working on. So I think the back base study uh, has stopped. Okay. Um, Jackie, I actually see a technical hand raise, which is pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie from Shore Rikers. Just a quick question going back to uh, the elevation of Venard and Mathis. Would that mean from uh, where uh, Venard and Mathis meet or down to the clubhouse and around? No, it's only about 400 feet of road from the intersection, oh. about 200 feet in either direction. Oh. So how will that affect people on, you know, coming down towards the clubhouse on Bernard? Would that help or? Well, they won't have to drive through a giant puddle at that intersection. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, won't be a giant puddle, but there's still be flooding on the, I live about five houses uh, from the clubhouse. So there'll still be flooding on that part of the street, but not a giant puddle up on the end. Correct. Okay. That's where, the, um, that's where the check valves will come into play, Jackie. Oh. So the, the combination of the check valves in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the and storm. And the elevation. 
and, the tech valves and, and that, aren't coming. Yeah, and that elevation of Mathis and Bernard will make all the difference in the world for uh, a great many of us down here towards the club. Oh, it will. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, you're hired. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm re no, I'm not hired. I'm retired. Oh, uh, retired. Okay. Um, any, other, any other questions? And please feel free to use the email addresses and follow up questions. And we'll be, I, we'd like to. I, I, have, I, have one, I have one question. Sure. I, I'm not sure on a drawing, but there's a, a spot on uh, Drum Point above Halsey that it kind of floods over. And I'm not sure if that was on your map or was not on your map. Word? It, no, it's it's actually drum point. When drum point, uh, it'll flood over. I guess on Halsey. right, Halsey. right, right. No, not on Halsey. Above, uh, just above Halsey on drum point. Okay. Is that on your map? Is that considered? Whenever, whenever it gets high, it, that road floods. It's hard to get out of drum point. So I would think that it would be, but I'm not sure. Um, is Act trying to get back to the map? Yeah, Jeanette, yeah. <laughs> one more. Sorry. Yeah, one more. Yeah. yeah Trump. Keep going. One more. You got to go to Shore. You got to go to Shore Acres. There we go. Yeah, see where it says Ward, and it does say red. There's a red spot right there. But it I see it. It's towards the bottom. Yep, right there. Yeah, right there. That 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 whole road kind of like floods over when it floods. What is is that red thing indicate that's going to be a, a check valve that's going to prevent that from happening, or is that? Well, that's indicating where there's existing inlets now that discharge into the into the canal there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. You see if that I narrow a spot of land right there. I guess the bulkheads are low on both sides, so it floods up there. Okay. And as we said, uh, this is Eric from Act Engineers talking. Uh, some of these areas, when we get into final design, this is we're working with the data we've got at this point. That might be an area that we we highlight and we take a look at. Um, okay, if you could note that, maybe. additional data to look at look because we're looking at those elevations, you know, two one and two four. You know, right at the moment, but there might be some additional surrounding conditions we need to know about to get to final design. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anyone from the public? Any final questions? Or, um, like I said, Van, you can ask your follow up um, questions at any time. The dialogue is. Oh, I see. Did I see Dorothy raise her hand? Oh, maybe she removed Yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's Ian again. I just have one quick question. I guess this is for Alyssa. Um, consider, I'm, I'm from the triangle on Mathis, the second house in. And like I said, we flood now through the garage pretty bad <clears throat> with the uh, flat streets. My concern, I'm assuming that you're going to work with somebody like myself once that elevation is complete so that we don't continue to flood worse. I have, to see, I have to see a plan to see whether even the water is going to be directed. Oh uh, yeah, that that was the question. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait to see the whole plan then. Okay, cool. I mean, we have this survey of the elevations that are there. I mean, if you had somebody, somebody has actually been to your house and collected the elevations by your garage, by I, the property lines, just, uh, just to avoid that situation. But I I haven't seen a plan where the devoter, what the plan is to divert the water or where the new low points will be. Yeah. No. Okay. Cool. You answered my question. Thank you. I had a quick question just about timing. You, you did a good job of answering how the timing might work for the first approved elements that, that are starting tomorrow, you know, starting with the approval of the dollars tomorrow. Um, but what about the, uh, the next stages? Um, do you have any sense of all, uh, can you give us any sense at all of, of how that might play out? Uh, what, uh, what kind of time, time frame? Well, we only do capital budgets uh, once a year, so it, each year we um, throw everything in the mix and come up with a capital budget, which is typically more than half uh, of what is asked for by our department heads. So the capital budget includes everything from 
um, repairing and improving parks to buying police equipment to um, buying ambulances. Uh, everything is um, mostly everything we do is in the capital budget. So we're trying to develop a five year capital budget timeline because, as you know, this is one of four of these meetings. Um, I'm sorry if you're having trouble hearing me. Somebody's microphone's on, and so we can hear all that background. But um, so this is one of four neighborhood meetings, and there's four neighborhoods that are um, quite complicated, as you guys are, and in need of uh, large-scale projects. So all I can tell you is what's approved in the capital budgets for tomorrow night, and the fact that we are going to um, come up with a flood mitigation-specific element of our capital budget that we will fund every year for the next um, four or five years. Uh, to try to attack this, but we have to do some pieces in each neighborhood as we go. So I, I, I couldn't, because if I, if you asked me a year ago, if I would be sitting in council chambers having a Zoom meeting with 10% uh, of the workforce furloughed because uh, we're all wearing masks, uh, I would have laughed at you. So I really don't try to predict what's going to happen next year because as I've learned, anything can happen. So I can only speak to what's approved tomorrow night and tell you that the council does have a commitment for a long-term plan for flood mitigation for all of Brick Town. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Joanne, if I may say, I don't. I, it looks like there's no other questions, but I would just like from, on behalf of ACT, to say thank you to all the, everybody that participated tonight. Um, as I said, th this was our really first big Zoom public meeting too, because we're used to being with the people, talking to the people and showing them exactly, you know, looking at where their houses are and talking specifically about different issues. So, uh, th you know, thank you for, for letting us share this and, and it's really great to put some names with some faces and uh, uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Vice President Halloran, would you like to say anything in closing? No, I appreciate all the work that ACT has put into this. Um, you know, this is, uh, this issue is, uh, is just keeps getting bigger every year, I think. Uh, it's, you know, we're chasing this thing constantly, uh, and it is a huge undertaking for the township. However, for the residents, uh, I want them to know that we are trying to do as much as we can do under the circumstances. It's, uh, it's near impossible to completely remedy all these um, issues in one fell swoop. You have to do them over time. And unfortunately, we, we have to suffer through some of this uh, inconvenience and, and um, more than inconvenience. It's beyond inconvenience, uh, yeah. you know, for a longer period than we want to. But be assured that we are um thinking about it and working towards uh getting it all resolved so thank you thank you everybody for participating you know we we can't do this without the residents uh input yes. uh, we need that it just is it's so critical we don't see it day to day because we're not in the on every street corner every day but um we need your input so it's important and you, and I think you know that we're, the entire administration is open and uh, has an open door policy uh, to contact them, any one of us, and we will uh, respond. So thank you for your participation. Thank you. Okay, so with that said, there's no further hands raised, so we will sign off, but the meeting will be has been recorded. Oh, Kevin's got another question, okay. One last point that, everybody may benefit from as far as perspective is concerned is that all of these low-lying areas uh were were uh, uh we live in a tidal zone uh the, the the strata that we have our homes on uh is not a firm uh gravelly bottom that you might find you know, 10, 15, 20 miles inland. Uh, if if everybody is that, that that has been boating out there has seen grassy meadow areas, uh, a lot of what, the areas we live on today were once just that. So gravity affects us all, and uh, 
gravity is having its way through the course of the decades with the very uh, places w that we live. So uh, everybody is concerned about global warming and the, the rising of the sea level. And I, I understand that, but at the same time, we're slowly sinking because we all live on a big sponge. So uh, I just thought that might help to give uh, some people some additional perspective. <laughs> Thanks. Well said. Thank you, Kevin. Plus, uh, it gives me an opportunity to say thank you to all of the people in ACT and uh, the administration. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you very much. Okay, well, with that, we will uh, sign off and uh, the recording will be available. Uh, and we'll look for your emails um, for any future questions or things you didn't think of tonight, and we'll answer them uh, ASAP. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And stay safe. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.